Welcome again to Math 800 Pre-Algebra. Today we are doing Section 4.8, Geometry Applications, Area and Volume. Our objectives. 1. To find the area of a triangle. 2. To find the volume of a rectangular solid. And 3. To find the volume of a pyramid. To find the area of a triangle, you take 1 half times base times height. Basically, the reason this works is because a triangle is half of a rectangle. If we just had a rectangle, we just take the length times width, which is the same as base times height. But the triangle is only half of that, so we have one half base times height. Here's an example of a triangle. Notice the height might not be one of the edges. The height could be an interior measure. The most important thing to realize is the height and the base meet at a 90 degree angle, which is indicated by this little box. So really, the only thing you have to do is find the two things that form this right angle that have this little box by them. One is the base, one is the height, and you multiply one half base times height. Be careful, sometimes in your homework and on the worksheet, I'm also asking you to find the perimeter. Perimeter needs to use the edges. If your height is on the inside, that is not part of your perimeter. We'll not see very many triangles like this, but notice again the height and this base, there's that right angle. That's the key thing to look for. Example. Find the area of the triangle. This triangle has three side lengths of 26 feet, 39 and 3 fourths feet, and 47 feet, and this interior measure of 22 feet. Notice right here is this right angle. That means this 22 feet and this 47 feet are our base and our height. That is what we're going to use to find the area. We don't use the 26 or the 39 and 3 fourths. Our area is half the base times the height, or a half times 47 feet times 22 feet. Rewrite 47 and 22 as fractions by putting them over 1. Notice the 22 can be rewritten as 2 times 11, and the 2 cancels with the 2 in the denominator. And 47 times 11 winds up being 517, and we have feet squared because we had feet times feet. Area is always measured in square units. Most of you are doing fine with that, but occasionally some of you are losing points because you forget that area is square units. Another example. Find the area of the triangle with side lengths 9 inches, 6 and a half inches, and 11 and 1 tenth inches. Notice right here this little box, that indicates the right angle, so that tells us our height is 6 and a half inches and our base is 9 inches. This right angle is the key thing to look for. Our area will be one half base times height, or one half nine inches times six and a half inches. Rewrite both nine and six and a half as fractions. We have nine over one and thirteen over two. We converted this mixed number to an improper fraction. In this case, nothing will simplify, so we wind up with 117 over four inches squared, or 29 and one fourth inches squared. I will accept either answer, either the improper fraction or the mixed number. It has to be simplified, but it doesn't have to be a mixed number. I am perfectly fine with you stopping here and leaving it as 117 over 4 inches squared. Here's a slightly more complicated problem. It says find the area of the shaded part in this figure. This whole figure makes up a rectangle. If we ignore the triangle part in the middle and just thought this was one big rectangle, the area would just simply be length times width, which is 30 times 40 centimeters squared, or 1,200 centimeters squared. However, the whole rectangle is not shaded in. In fact, there's this triangle in the middle that's not shaded. So we need to determine how much is not shaded and then subtract that from the shaded area. So the unshaded part is the triangle. Notice here's that right angle, so our base is 30 and our height is 32, so the area of this unshaded triangle will be 1 half times 30 times 32. We do have a little bit of simplifying going on. Notice both 30 and 32 could be broken down as 2 times something, but there was only 1, 2 in the denominator, so they left the 32 alone. This multiplies out to be 480 centimeters squared. This is the unshaded area. So to find the total shaded amount, Take the total rectangle, which was 1,200, subtract the unshaded area of 480, and that leaves you with your total shaded area. Our answer then is 720 centimeters squared. That is the shaded area. To find volume, volume is the measure of the space inside a solid shape. So perimeter, which is the first thing we learned, was the outside edge or the distance around the outside edge. 
of a two-dimensional shape or a flat shape. Area was the stuff inside that two-dimensional shape. Now volume would be the stuff that fills a three-dimensional shape. To find the volume of a rectangular solid, which is a fancy word for box, you find the length times the width, which is basically the area of the bottom, and then you multiply it by the height. So that's going to stack that all the way up and give you your overall total volume. Length, width, and height will all be measured in units, and so you're going to have those units three times, which is why the final answer is always in cubic units. Here's an example. We want to find the volume of this box. It is four centimeters long, three centimeters wide, and two centimeters high. Basically what we're doing is we're trying to count how many one by one by one centimeter uh, cubes would fit in this overall box. We could count this top layer. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And notice there's a whole second layer that will be identical. So if you have 12 on top and 12 on the bottom, your overall number of little cubes is 24. So the cubic measure is 24 or 24 centimeters cubed. Obviously, you're not always going to be able to count out little boxes, particularly if you're working with fractions or decimals. So let's do it using the formula. Volume is length times width times height. So it's 4 centimeters times 3 centimeters times 2 centimeters, which is 24. And notice there are 3 centimeters, so that's why it's centimeters cubed. It's cubic units. Now we'll find the volume of this box. It's 2 and a half inches wide, 7 inches long, and 10 inches high. Volume is length times width times height. So we have 7 inches times 2 and a half inches times 10. Because this is a mixed number, we're going to convert them all to fractions. 7 over 1, 5 over 2, and 10 over 1. Break the 10 down as 2 times 5, and those 2's cancel, and we're left with 175 inches cubed. That is the volume of this box. Lastly, we'll find the volume of a pyramid. To find the volume of a pyramid, you take 1 third times the area of the base. This capital B is not the length of the base, it's the area of the base. That's probably the hardest thing to remember. You're taking the area of the base, then a third times that times height. Again, it's volume, so it's in cubic units. Just like with the other triangles, a height and a base meet at a right angle, so look for this little box to indicate your height. Find the volume of this pyramid with a rectangular base. Our base is 5 centimeters by 4 centimeters, and our height is 11 centimeters. Again, notice that little triangle to in I'm sorry, rectangle to indicate a right angle. The area of the base is what we have to find first, and the area of the base is 5 times 4, or 20 centimeters squared. That's your base. To find the volume, then, you're going to take 1 third times that area of the base times the height. So 1 third times 20 centimeters squared times 11 centimeters. We're working with a fraction, so we write 20 as 20 over 1, and 11 as 11 over 1. Unfortunately, nothing will simplify, so we are going to just have to multiply and get either 220 over 3 centimeters cubed or the mixed number 73, 73 and 1 third centimeters cubed. Again, I am okay with either answer as long as it's simplified. I don't care if it's an improper fraction or a mixed number. That concludes section 4.8. Your next steps are to complete the worksheet for section 4.8, then check the key in D2L or come to class and we'll go over it. Then complete the online homework for section 4.8 through my math lab, and then start on section 5.1.